here we are again, another edition of 153greatfish.com. I have an exciting uh, Bible study for you tonight, giving you the sequence of the final prophecies of the end time. But before we begin, let's pray. Jesus, we thank you, Lord, for this day. God, we ask you to bless everybody who hears this study. Lord, let everyone, let everyone see the sign of the ensign. In Jesus' name, amen. And that's what we're going to talk about tonight. The end of prophecy. The end of prophecy. You'll see I've put three and a half, 1260, and 42. That's the time, times, and dividing of time. That's the amount of time that the tribulation period will last. Check my website out for a discussion on this topic. Let's talk about the final signs that are going to happen shortly before us. Number one is the ensign is raised with a trumpet voice. What is an ensign? An ensign is a flag, but it's a battle flag. It has the name of Jesus. It's Revelation 9.14. The day of the Lord gives us imminent signals. The Gog Magog will be at the border of Israel. Antichrist sways the weak in the Acts 2 church with propaganda. And the name of Jesus is restored for an end time revival. This is the ensign, the name of Jesus. A trumpet voice will first be heard by the saints, then the rest of the world. It is an ensign, in other words, the name of Jesus, God's battle flag. The day of the Lord is signaled with both parallel and sequential signs, wonders, and declarations. Here's the scriptures. You can read them for yourself. Isaiah 11, 10 through 12, 13, 2, 18, 3. Revelations chapter 6, 9, 13, 14, and 15. Number two. The everlasting gospel is preached. Here it is, the everlasting gospel. Notice what it's not, except Jesus is your personal savior. It's not John 3, 16. The gospel is defined by 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. Death, burial, resurrection. Acts 2, 38. We must repent. We must die. We must be buried in his name in the waters of baptism. We must resurrect and receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Backsliders will return to the true church as they hear the final signals. Israel comes into the true Christian faith under pressure from God, Magog, and the preaching of the two witnesses. Israel is about to come under intense pressure. And then let the preaching begin. After the ensign or the signal is given to the church and the world, an end time revival of epic proportions breaks out, revealing again the true eternal gospel. As I said, 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4, Acts 2, 38. This is a great messianic awakening in Israel. That's what occurs. It's called the short work. It begins as the name of Jesus. That's the ensign. That's the battle flag. That's the revelation is restored to Israel and to those who have ears to hear. Read about it in Revelation 11, 3, 14, 6, Isaiah 35, 10, Joel 2, 28 through 32, Zechariah chapters 8 through chapter 14, Hosea chapter 6. Number three, the Gog Magog Caliph rises. Here he is, Syria's Alawite Caliphate. Is this the man, the reincarnated prophet Muhammad, the false prophet? Sunail Hassan, he's the Tiger Forces General in Syria. He's an Alawite believer and poet. Is he the reincarnation of Muhammad, the hidden? Twelfth Imam. Remember, the hidden Mahdi is the prophesied false prophet of Christianity. The twelfth Imam, the Mahdi, the foretold Islamic false prophet, reincarnates in Arab minds. This man unites Shias and Sunnis politically, not necessarily spiritually. He unites them along the Euphrates. He destroyed ISIS, Al Qaeda, and the Syrian Democratic Forces with the funding and support from Iran's IRGC. Revolutionary Guards. His next mission will be to destroy Israel. He will command the locust horde, described in Joel, armed by Mother Russia. His mystical Alawite theology is a syncretic version of Shia Islam. His poetry is powerfully, powerfully potent and it sways Islam. Read about him in Matthew 7, 15 through 20, 24, 4 through 5, 1 John 4, 1 through 3, Joel chapter 1, 1 through 12, and Revelation 19, 20, and 2010, the Caliph. Number four, Israel attacks Iran over nukes. Yes, the special op, 
that goes awry. Israel will attack Iran after losing patience with U.S. inaction. Nuke and centrifuge facilities will be destroyed. Iran gains worldwide sympathy through propaganda. China crosses the Euphrates in support of Iran as oil shipping lanes in the Gulf are mined, closed, or shut down. China, Japan, India are totally dependent on Iranian oil, and Israel will not get world sympathy for this action, but they must take action. Having lost patience with U.S. promises to halt Iran's development of the nuclear bomb, Israel preemptively strikes to solve their existential threat. Worldwide combination of this condemnation of this strike occurs, producing political instability in the Knesset, the political arm of Israel. Political revolution occurs in the Jewish state. Then a corrupt Jewish leader rises to compromise, submit, and surrender to the worldwide propaganda of the Gog Magog Alliance to the north. God puts jaw hooks into Gog's mouth. All nations come against Jerusalem. Zechariah 12, 9, 14, 2 through 16, Luke 21, 24. Number five, the king of the Romans condemns Israel. Who's the king of the Romans? Remember Daniel's metal man vision? To the west, the Latin speakers, the right leg, to the east, the Greek speakers. We see the ten toes of iron and clay. There he is, Constantine, the head of the false church. And he had his little uh, council in 325 AD in Nechea, where he basically crowned himself as Christ. And then to the east are the Greek speakers, and to the west are the Latin speakers. That is his church. Constantine united the post-Jewish churches at Nicaea, and he established himself as pontiff and doctrinal author, 325 AD. If you didn't agree with his Nicene doctrine, he persecuted you. He is the king of Rome. Now a new leader of Western Christianity will rise to heal a wounded and divided end-time superchurch. This is Daniel's middleman, the Antichrist. Make sure you take a look at this agreement, ECT agreement of 1994, you can find it in Wikipedia. Evangelicals and Catholics together, their agreement creates this worldwide super church. Western nations, that is NATO, in union with the super church leader of charismatic personality and new age secular values, condemns Israel's attack on Iran. Now siding with the Muslim propaganda, this beast leader unites secular thinking into a ten-headed alliance to oppose Israel. A deadly sore of Antichrist values infects worldwide thinking as Middle East conflagration looms. The beast leader pretends peace, but war against biblical truths is his Apollyon mission. Read about him in Daniel 3, 10 through 18, Revelation 6, 8, Revelation 13, 15 through 17, 14, 9 through 11, and 15, 2. Number six, restoration of Jesus' name baptism. Here we see the Acts 2.38 and Acts 19.5 baptism as practiced by Peter and Paul. They always baptized in the name of Jesus because they knew that the name of Jesus fulfilled the titles Father, Son, Holy Ghost. So, the Babylon church system will do this. They will pray for food in Jesus' name. They'll cast out devils in Jesus' name. They will heal the sick in Jesus' name. But the Babylon church system will not baptize people in Jesus' name. If you don't baptize in Jesus' name, you are part of this Babylon church system. Matthew 7, 22 through 23, looks what happens to these men. Many will say to me in that day, Jesus said, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name? From now on, we're going to read about his name, Father and Son. Psalm 110, 1 through 4. And in your name have we cast out devils, and in your name have we done many wonderful works. And then Jesus says, then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you that work iniquity. The name of Jesus will be restored to true worshipers in water baptism. Number seven, the great end time revival is actually centered in Israel. Here we see that Israel will get the gospel first. Number one, they will spread it to Egypt and then Egypt will send it to Syria. This fulfills the Isaiah 19 prophecy. So, the true gospel returns to the Jewish center point in Jerusalem. 
and it travels, as I said, to Egypt and to Syria, reforming the errant Coptic Church and Syrian Orthodox Church, fulfilling Isaiah 19, 18 through 25. During the three and a half year tribulation period, under the Gog Magog pressure, the Jews come into the Acts 238 non-Trinity faith. The message spreads to Egypt and, and Syria, producing the final reformation of errant Christianity. Worldwide revival accelerates. Isaiah 19:18. In that day, five cities in the land of Egypt shall speak the language of Canaan and swear to Yahweh of hosts. One shall be called the city of ruin. Here's the summary of the last of the end time prophecies. Let's get started. Now some of you may be angry having watched this presentation, but my question to you is, why don't you do what Peter did? Why don't you get baptized in Jesus' name? Why don't you exalt the name of Jesus? Peter was given the keys to the kingdom, and you know better, and the seminaries of America know better, and the seminaries of Europe know better than Peter? I don't think so. Why don't you do what Paul did when he baptized the Ephesian believers in the name of Jesus? Do the seminaries know better? Does American seminaries know better? Or do you understand the mystery of godliness and you can explain it? I don't think so. Well, it's time for the end time revival. It's time for this prophecy to start very soon. God bless you in Jesus' name.